This is El Yah Yasharala of the Through the Fire podcast, your black family advocate. All praises to the Most High. Peace to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. I'm coming to you again with another prayer. This one is a prayer for the Valley of the Dry Bones. Those who know, they know. That's all I can say. Um, we're at the closing time. So I'm just, you know, we got to up the ante when it comes to our studying and knowing these scriptures and knowing what they're telling us. Right. So um, what I want to read for you today is Ezekiel. Our Bible reading is going to be taken from Ezekiel 37. And it's a long chapter and we're going to read the entire chapter. Right. But I want you to pay attention you know, to the nuances. I want you in your own time to take the time out to read, matter of fact, the entire book of Ezekiel, right? And and let me say this, don't make the mistake of just reading it. I want you to study it, decode it, decipher it, compare it scripture upon scripture so that you will have the blessed understanding that the most high through his Holy Spirit, meaning his holy word is trying to get through to you um, because there's so much in what's being said in uh, in the book of Ezekiel and Ezekiel 37 in particular that pertains to us today in these last days. Right. We're at the closing hour of time. Right. We see the signs all over the place. I've been discussing that with you throughout these prayers and and, and you know, just in my communication with you. We're at the closing moments of time. Right. And if you are. If you are a child of Israel, that is a moment where we should be saying hallelujah, hallelujah, because our oppression is coming to an end. Hallelujah, because the sickness and the burden of right now is coming to an end. Hallelujah, because whatever financial issues, whatever depression you're facing, whatever loneliness you're facing, whatever confusion you're facing, whatever is hampering your life right now is coming to an end. So hallelujah for that. Right. But what I want to give you today is one of the most important um you know, Bible lessons in the scriptures. I know I, I did a lesson on the fig tree, right? Um, but I can also do a lesson on the Valley of the Dry Bones and its connection to the fig tree, right? But I want you to hear these scriptures, you know, and get from it the essence that it is uh, bringing across, all right? So let's start. Ezekiel 37, verse one, if you have your Bibles. If you don't, just listen along, touch and agree, be with be, be with us in spirit as we read, all right? Um, excuse me if I flub, trip up, um, you know, what, what I'm saying. I didn't get much sleep last night, so my concentration level is a little bit um, compromised. But let's just read through it and get from it what the Most High gives us, all right? Ezekiel 37, verse one, the hand of Yahweh is upon me and carried me out. See, I messed up already. I, I made a mistake. Let's start all over again. I apologize, all right? The hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and Behold, there were many, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Yahweh Elohim, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus saith, thus saith Yahweh Elohim up unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live and I will lay sinews upon you and will bring you up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I prophesied, there was a noise, sorry, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews, and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, 
Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and, and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I am Yahweh that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, saith Yahweh. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companies. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companies, and join them one... <clears throat> and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee saying wilt thou not not show us what thou meanest by these say unto them excuse me <clears throat> let me start from 18 again and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee saying Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is, in, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into, the, into their own land. And I will make them of the nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their God. And David, my servant shall be king over them and they shall, and they all shall have one shepherd and they, they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and... I will, sorry, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their God and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that in that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. <clears throat> May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Again, there is so much that we can take from that chapter. So much, so much, so much. That chapter is so rich with information pertaining to the last days. It's so rich with information pertaining to the salvation of Israel. It is so rich. 
you know, pertaining to the information of how we will be gathered out of the lands that we're in, how the Most High is going to bring the power of the heathen to an end and reestablish us in our land and so on and so forth. This is this is a, a chapter that is so filled with hope. That's why I wanted to read it to you today, because today I know we're feeling like the valley of the dry bones. We're dominated over by, you know, folks around us and, and most um, the ones that dominate us the most, of course, is white supremacy. Esau's kingdom is oppressing us wherever we go. We're, we're oppressed. We're, we're burdened down. We're dominated over. We're limited in terms of what we can do. There's no one we can turn to when Esau uh, begins to beat on us and cheat us out of things and, and steal from us and destroy us. We have no one that we can turn to. What the Most High is telling us is that he will be with us. He will be in the midst of us. He will place his sanctuary in the midst of us, right? Um, read Revelations, the last uh, few chapters starting at 21, and you'll see where it talks about how the um, John saw New Jerusalem coming down from the, um, from this, from the sky and how it rested um, you know, with, with the children of Israel and how the most high God was there in the city, the new Jerusalem, where the children of Israel are going to dwell. Right. <clears throat> and that's c connected, of course, to what Ezekiel is saying in 37. And what a powerful thing to know. And that's what I want you to stop and take a moment and think about. What a powerful thing to know that this valley of dry bones, these dry bones that have no sinews on it, and that just basically mean the tendons and the muscles and stuff, um, it has no flesh on it, it has no, no breath of life in it, that this valley of the dry bones will have the pleasure and the honor someday of the Most High dwelling with us, dwelling among us, dwelling within us. Our King, the spirit of our King will be in us. The, his presence will be around us and in the midst of us. What an absolute pleasure and honor to know that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please, please forgive me. I have to figure out what's going on with my throat and get it straightened out so I can stop doing this, especially while I'm recording. But what a pleasure and honor to know that, that the Most High will be with us in that way. No other people on this planet has the pleasure of knowing that, have the honor, the distinction of knowing that. That's what it means to be a chosen people. I want you today and for the rest of your life, as best as you possibly can, Israel, to walk in the power of that knowledge. Don't let anything on this earth, don't let anything distract you from, from, from knowing that that is who you are. You are a child of the Most High. Right. And it's a, it's a true thing because it's from the scriptures. The prophecies of the past have come true. So that means the prophecies of the future will come true. Don't let any burden that you may be facing today deter you from knowing who you are. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in your heart in a very strong way. Keep your eyes forever focused on the Most High, on His throne, on the kingdom. Keep your heart and your mind forever there. No matter what you endure here during this time, just know that this time is temporary. Rent and bills and, and jobs and and just all the stuff that's happening in the world right now, all these things are temporary. They're going to be washed away. When I say washed away, I don't even mean by water. I mean by fire. So they're going to be burnt away, right? They're going to be taken away. And we're not going to have to worry about these things any anymore, right? I just want to lift up a prayer right now for the Valley of the Dry Bones. And I want to pray for your eyes to, to be open so you can see the things that are coming in this world that the Most High have set aside for you because you are a special people unto the Most High. You are his sanctified city and, and, and bless you. And um, I just want to pray for you right now. So let's just take a moment and pray um, as best you can. Please face east. I am facing east right now. Um, I have my friend just draped across me um, and my friend just draped across me. Um, my head is not covered because I am a man. And that's according to um, Paul's writings. Right. My head is not covered. If you're a female, your head should be covered. Again, that's according to Paul's writings. Um, of course, we know that is not a thus saith the Lord. Uh, but I do recognize Paul as a righteous man. Right. So it says a uh, uh, holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Right. So I recognize that. And um, in honor of that, I, I say, you know, I keep my head uncovered when I pray. Right. To not dishonor my head. Um, the shoes are off my feet. Right. 
the shoes are off my feet. I add no extra burden to you. If you don't want to take the shoes off your feet, that's fine. And matter of fact, with everything, as uh, just do it as best you can. You may be in a position where you can't uh, pray, um, where you can't pray in the way that I'm doing it right now. So just, just in your spirit, just touch and agree. All right. Um, so let's get started. Yahweh, our Father, our Creator, our God. Without you, Father, nothing would exist. We wouldn't be here. No matter what we're going through right now in our lives, we could be wheelchair bound. Some of us are, because of illness, is stuck at home and can't get around. Some of us are dealing with blindness or the inability to see or the inability to speak. Some of us are dealing with emotional problems, developmental problems. Some of us are just dealing with problems, whatever they may be. But Father, we bring all of that before you, asking you to bless us, to heal us, to touch us, cause us to know and understand that for us, you have set aside something better than the life that we're experiencing right now. You have set aside something better. You have set aside a city for us, a holy place for us. You plan to make with us a covenant of peace. And I know folks don't understand fully what that means. Perhaps if we take a moment and just look around at the unpeaceful state of this world, the wars and the conflicts, the strife, the discomfort that Israel is subjected to, the lies we have been told our entire lives. By law, by the law of the land, we're forced to go to schools that, that tell us that we're not Israelites. We're forced to go to schools that tell us to celebrate the heathen practices of this world. We're forced to take jobs when we become adults, to pay rent and pay taxes, pay taxes to a nation that we know that that the that tax dollar is going to go towards furthering our oppression and captivity. We're forced to be under the domination of a people who hate us, as the book of Leviticus 26 explains to us. We're forced to be under the domination of a people who hate us. We're ruled over by a people who hate us. And it's not just Esau. It's also Israelites who have joined with Esau in confederacy against us. It's all of their institutions that do not have covenants of peace with us. All of their institutions who do not have plans of peace with us but would like to exterminate from our minds and exterminate from our existence that understanding that we are Israel and that we are the people of the Most High God. It has not been a peaceful time for us, but that promise of peace is, is ahead, is in prophecy, is written, and just as it is written, it will come to pass. Please strengthen my brothers and sisters out there in this world who are living in righteousness, the young and the old. Strengthen them in body, in mind, and in spirit. Strengthen them so that whatever difficulties, whatever challenges they may be facing, that we may be facing, that we'll be overcomers that we'll be more than conquerors, that we will not allow this world to snatch us out of the hand of the Most High, that we will walk in faith and not change our minds, that we will leave behind Babylon and not look back, that we will forever be looking towards Zion, never allowing this, this time to distract us from what's coming in that holy, holy city, right? Because our eyes have never seen our minds have never even imagined the things that the Most High have set, set apart for us. I pray for people, for Israelites in their daily walk. The daily walk is where the struggle is. That battle between flesh and spirit, that is where our struggle is. 
Oftentimes, that struggle presents itself as friends or as family members or loved ones or co-workers or neighbors. That struggle presents itself in many ways. But I pray that we overcome. I pray that we overcome because the promise is too sweet. I pray that we overcome because the vision is too clear. I pray that we overcome because our understanding is too deep. I pray that we overcome because we're too focused to be distracted. We're too brave to be intimidated. I pray that we overcome because the time is now for us to be overcomers. Please take from us any spirit of fear that we may have, any spirit of doubt that we may have, any spirit of confusion that we, may, that we may have. I pray for the children of Israel that they find themselves in the right camps that can feed them, that can feed them spiritual food, that can feed them companionship, that can feed them just being in the company of like-minded folks. You know, because those simple battles are battles, right? Those simple battles are big deals. Those things that don't seem like a lot, like wearing fringes. If you work in a corporate environment, it may not be comfortable walking up in there with fringes on. If you work in an environment where there's a lot of, of folks who are so-called Jewish people, it may not be comfortable to let them know what your identity is because we know how strongly they detest us. If you work in environments where you wear uniforms or whatever, it just may not be easy to throw on fringes to work in those environments. And other things, too, that set us apart as a peculiar people, our diets, our dietary choices. People get offended when we say we don't eat the things that they eat. They get offended at that. Sabbath keeping, especially if you keep Sabbath according to the moon. It's difficult to do that because the Sabbath can fall right on the day when you have to go to work, right on the day when, it, when, when your job requires a lot of labor. It's difficult to keep the law, statutes, and commandments in captivity. It's frustrating. But nevertheless, hold on, Israel. Do what you have to do to hold on. Never let go and never give up. Never quit. Let's face this thing. Let's get through this thing. And let's get back to our city and back to our king, back to where we belong. In the name of our King, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, I pray that this prayer has touched someone's life. I pray that this prayer has moved someone to understanding that right now, right now we have the power. Right now in this moment. I know it doesn't seem like it because we're the valley of the dry bones, but let me explain something to you, Israel. The world is shaking the way it's shaking because we are waking up. I hope you know and understand that. We don't have nuclear weapons. We don't have M16s or whatever gun they're using now to replace the M16s. We don't have that. We don't have, um, you know, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. We don't have all that kind of stuff. And we don't have all these weapons and technologies, these drone technologies. We don't have the spy systems. We don't have the communication systems. We don't have the soldiers. We don't have all those things. But you know what we have? We have a grip on the times. Hallelujah. We have a grip on the times. And that is something that they cannot take from us. That is something that they can't explode and blow up and blow away and shoot down and kill and put in a grave. We have a grip on the times. We are the fig tree. We are the ones that are dictating the way things go. We're the ones who are dictating the way the Most High God is operating. Do you understand that? Our awakening, the sheer force of our awakening is shaking this world. The reason why the world is in derision, because we are in control of the times. And the time is up. The time is up for Esau. The time is up for the heathen. The time is up for the other nations. The time is up for Israel who refused to see the truth. The time is up for all the liars and the whoremongers and the dogs and the cheaters. And the time is just up. It's time for the righteous to wake up. It's time for the righteous to walk rightly and show the most high who we are. That, that the fig tree is bearing fruit. All right. Because it's this first fruit that the most high is going to begin to turn this world upside down and inside out. And the reason why is because he's going to shake this world so he can shake Israelites loose from this world. I pray, Israel, that you develop the heart, the mind, the courage, the strength to let Babylon go.
I pray that you let Babylon go. Let Babylon go and grab a hold. Grab a hold to the righteous hem of Yahawashah's garment so we can make it into the kingdom and be with our king, King David. That way we have our protection. The heathen will never rise up against us again. The heathen will no longer be beating us in the streets and knocking us over our heads with batons or uh, basically electrocuting us with their, their weapons of destruction to destroy our minds and our bodies to beat us into submission. The heathen will no longer strip us off our land. The heathen will no longer take and rob and steal from us to the point that we're left in abject poverty, disrespected by every nation around the world, hated and disrespected by our own women and children because we have, be we have been rendered useless by the policies of this nation. As men, we're kings without a kingdom. That's how we're viewed. That's how we're spoken of. We're mocked and we're ridiculed and not just by our enemy, but by our own women. Right. That's how we viewed and that's how we seen. But the most high is going to turn this whole thing around and set us back in our land and give the power of this world back to us. We bless the most high for that. We bless our righteous king for that. That's the power that we have, Israel. Never forget it. Hold fast to it. Never let it go. It's yours. It belongs to you. Read Ezekiel 37. Read the entire book of Ezekiel. But read Ezekiel 37 and let those words comfort you in this time. You are the dry bones for now. Right? But the Most High is going to bring snooze up upon you, flesh upon you, and put the breath of life in you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and bless his name for that. I love the whole house of Israel, all 12 tribes. And we are one. We're no longer two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. We are one kingdom now because we are now in the hand of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So I pray that this prayer touched your lives. And I pray that in your walk, you'll be strong. In the name of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, Malik Rosh Allah, the King of Israel, we pray. Thank you for listening and taking out the time. just want to say a couple of things at the end here. I am going to be um, doing a poem uh, on this subject. It addresses the um, the Valley of the Dry Bones. Um, in another video, I'll upload that and connect it to this one so you'll be able to you know connect to it directly. So please check that out. Um, and particularly if this prayer has been a blessing to you, please hit the subscribe button so you can... Um, hear these prayers check out the podcast you know they, they'll be um at the end of this video as well and uh just go to the channel and, and look through the videos there and check out the podcast see what we're talking about and um please like subscribe share comment and um and continue to follow and be a part of the building of this ministry and wherever you're at if you have not been told i want to tell you right now today that you are loved israel you are loved. You are so precious in the sight of the Most High God. You are loved. So please treat one another with love. When you're walking out there in the street and you see a fellow brother or sister out there with fringes on, just say shalom. You know, um, greet them and greet them in a the spirit of love. Pray for them in your heart. Let them know that they are loved and, and be at peace with your brothers and sisters because the time is now, Israel. The time is just now. And I love you. Have a blessed day. Amen.